The Siege of Godesburg, the 18th of November, the 17th of December, 1583, was the first major siege of the Cologne War, seeking to wrest control of an important fortification. Bavarian and mercenary soldiers surrounded the Godesburg and the village then of the same name of now Bad Godesburg, located at its foot. On top of the mountain sat a formidable fortress, similarly named Godesburg. Built in the early 13th century during a contest over the election of two competing archbishops, towering over the Rhine Valley, the Godesburg's strategic position commanded the roads leading to and from Bonn, the elector of Cologne's capital city, and Cologne, the region's economic powerhouse. Over time, the electors strengthened its walls and heightened its towers. They added a small residence in the 14th century and the donjon developed as a stronghold of the electoral archives and valuables. By the mid-16th century, the Godesburg was considered nearly impregnable and had become a symbol of the dual power of the prince electors and archbishops of Cologne, one of the wealthiest ecclesiastical territories in the Holy Roman Empire. The Cologne War, a feud between the Protestant elector, Gebhard Truxus of Wahlberg, and the Catholic elector, Ernst of Bavaria, was yet another schismatic episode in the electoral and archdiocesan history. The Godesburg came under attack from Bavarian forces in November 1583. It resisted a lengthy cannonade by the attacking army. Finally, sappers tunneled into the basalt core of the mountain placed 680 kilograms of powder into the tunnel and blew up a significant part of the fortifications. The explosion killed many of the defending troops, but the resulting rubble impeded the attackers' progress, and the remaining defenders continued to offer staunch resistance. Only when some of the attackers entered the castles in a courtyard through the latrine system were the Bavarians able to overcome their opponents. The Godesburg's commander and some surviving defenders took refuge in the keep, using prisoners held in the dungeons as hostages. The commander negotiated safe passage for himself, his wife and his lieutenant. The others who were left in the keep, men, women and children, were killed. Nearby Bonn fell to the Bavarians the following month. Background the Cologne War, 1583-1589, was triggered by the 1582 conversion of the Archbishop Prince Elector of Cologne, Gebhard Truxus of Wahlberg, to Calvinism, and his subsequent marriage to Agnes of Mansfeld Eisleben in 1583, when he refused to relinquish the electorate, a faction of clerics in the Cologne Cathedral chapter elected another Archbishop, Ernst of Bavaria, of the House of Wittelsbach. Initially, troops of the competing Archbishops of Cologne fought for control of the electorate within a few months. The local feud between the two parties expanded to include supporters from the electorate of the Palatinate on the Protestant side, and the Duchy of Bavaria on the Catholic side. Italian mercenaries hired with papal gold augmented the Catholic force. In 1586, the conflict expanded further, with direct involvement of the Spanish Netherlands for the Catholic side and tertiary involvement from Henry III of France and Elizabeth I of England on the Protestant side. At its most fundamental, it was a local feud between two competing dynastic interests, the Seneschals of the House of Wahlberg and the Dukes of the House of Wittelsbach, that acquired religious overtones. The dispute had broad implications in the political, social, and dynastic balance of the Holy Roman Empire. It tested the principle of ecclesiastical reservation established in the religious peace of Augsburg. The 1555 agreement settled religious problems in the empire with the principle quius regia, eius religia. The subjects of a secular prince followed the religion of their sovereign. Ecclesiastical reservation excluded the territories of the imperial prelates from quius regia, eius religia. In an ecclesiastical territory, if the prelate changed his religion, his subjects did not have to do so. Instead, the prelate was expected to resign from his post. 
Problematically, the 1555 agreement did not specify this detail. Controversy of conversion Agnes of Mansfeld eyes Liban was a Protestant canoness at a convent in Jerusheim, today a district of Dusseldorf. After 1579, she maintained a lengthy liaison with the Archbishop of Cologne, Gebhard of Wolberg Trauchberg, Truxus of Wolberg. In defense of her honor, two of her brothers convinced Gebhard to marry her, and Gebhard considered converting to Calvinism for her. Rumors spread throughout the electorate of his possible conversion, and that he might refuse to relinquish his position. The electorate had overcome similar problems. Hermann of Weed had converted to Protestantism and resigned in 1547. Salenti Nevisenberg Grenzar, Gebhard's immediate predecessor, had resigned upon his marriage. In December 1582, Gebhard announced his conversion and extended equal religious rights to Protestants in the electorate. In February, he married Agnes. At the end of March 1583, the Pope excommunicated him. The cathedral chapter promptly elected a new archbishop, Ernst of Bavaria. With two competing archbishops, both claiming the see and the electorate, the contenders and their supporters gathered the troops. In numbers, Ernst had the advantage. The Pope hired 5,000 mercenaries from the Farnese family to support the new elector. Ernst's brother, the Duke of Bavaria, provided an army and Ernst arranged for his brother Ferdinand's army to take possession of the so-called Oberstift. The southern territory of the electorate, his troops plundered many of its villages and towns. With the support of Adolf von Neuina and the Count Solms, Gebhard secured some of the northern and eastern portions of the electorate, where he held a geographical advantage in his proximity to the rebellious Dutch provinces. In the south, however, Ferdinand's troops hunted the soldiers Gebhard had left in possession of such overstiffed villages as Arvila and Linz. Gebhard's troops were forced out of their strongholds hunted through the countryside, and eventually captured. By the fall of 1583, most of the Oberstift had fallen to Ferdinand's army and many of Gebhard's erstwhile supporters, including his own brother, had returned home. In some cases, they honored parole agreements made after their capture. A strong supporter, Johann Casimir of Simin, brother of the powerful Louis VI, Elector Palatine, returned to the Palatine when his brother died. Other supporters were frustrated by Gebhard's chronic inability to pay his troops or intimidated by threats of Rudolf II, Holy Roman Emperor. By late October 1583, most of the Oberstift had fallen, although he still held the Gottesberg, located near the villages of Godesberg and Friesdorf, the formidable fortress at Bonn, and the fortified village of Poppelsdorf. Fortress the Goddesberg Foundation Stone was laid on 15 October 1210 upon the order of Dietrich of Hengerbach, the Archbishop of Cologne, who was himself in disputed possession of the electorate and fighting to keep his position. Although his competitors deposed Dietrich in 1212, his successes finished and enlarged the fortress. It featured in chronicles of the subsequent centuries as both a symbolic and physical embodiment of the power of the Archbishop of Cologne in his many struggles for regional authority in secular and ecclesiastical matters. Furthermore, by the late 14th century, the fortress had become the repository of the elector's valuables and archives. By the mid-16th century, with the inclusion of residential facilities, the castle was popularly considered the Lieblingssitz, or the favorite seat, of the electors. The fortification originally had been constructed in the medieval style. In the reign of Siegfried II of Westerberg, it successfully resisted a five-week siege by the Count of Cleves. Successive archbishops continued to improve the defences with stronger walls, adding levels to the central Bergfried, which was cylindrical, not square like many medieval donjons. In addition to the construction of the small residence, these archbishops also expanded the inner works to include dungeons and a chapel. They fortified the walls with towers and crenellations added a curtain wall, and improved the roads that led to the entrance in a series of switchbacks. 
By the 1580s, the Goddesburg was not only the favorite residence of the elector, but also an elaborate stone fortress. Although it retained some of its medieval character, it had been enhanced partially in the style made popular by Italian military architects. The physical location on the mountain did not permit the star-shaped trace Italian, nevertheless, the Goddesburg's cordons are thick. Rounded walls and massive iron-studded gates made its defenders formidable adversaries. Its height, some 120 meters above the Rhine on the peak of a steep hill, made artillery assault difficult. The approach road, with its hairpin turns, made battering rams impractical. The turns, overlooked by the castle wall, made foot assault dangerous and slow. Defenders could fire down on attackers from many angles. Fortifications such as this, and the star-shaped fortresses more commonly found in the flatter lands of the Dutch provinces, increasingly made 16th-century warfare both difficult and expensive. Victory was not simply a matter of winning a battle over the enemy's army. Victory required traveling from one fortified and armed city to another and investing time and money in one of two outcomes. Ideally, a show of extraordinary force convinced city leaders to surrender. If the show of force did not intimidate a city, the alternative was an expensive siege that reduced the city to rubble and ended with storming the ruins. In the case of the former, when a city capitulated, it would have to quarter troops at its own expense, called execution, but the soldiers would not be permitted to plunder. In the case of the latter, no quarter would be given to the defenders and the victorious soldiers were released to pillage, plunder, and sack.